Hello everybody and welcome to this new course about Next.js, the JavaScript framework to create front-end application made by Vercel on top of React. In this video, I'm going to explain to you and to show you how to create a front-end application with Next.js and stay until the end because I'm going to give you some advice, some tips and some accounts to follow and keep in touch with everything that is new about Next.js. All right, if you go on nextjs.org, you arrive on the official website of Next.js. And recently, the new version, the version 13, introduced a new way of doing uh, a front-end application with Next.js, okay? So basically, Next is built on top of React and it is written in here. So I'm going to go directly on Get Started. And here I got a quick introduction on what is Next.js. If you don't know it, you can read it. I'm going to click on installation and there we go. So here on the top uh, left, we see that we got a toggle and we can use either the app router on the page router. So let me give you a quick explanation about this. The app router has been introduced in the version 13 of Next.js. So by the time I'm doing this video, it's 2023 and we've got the version 13. And before we used to use the pages router, so the version below the version 13. This entire course is going to be about Next.js 13, okay? So if you wanna switch, uh, if you wanna switch on the documentation, you can also click here and you see it is changing here, uh, the menu. All right, there we go. So I got my, uh, of course, I got my VS code running right here. And I'm going to simply copy paste this code that I have here. And I already see that when I try to install Next.js, I got a lot of question asked. So we're gonna try right now. So I'm going to copy paste this command in here and I'm going to zoom maybe a little bit and I'm going to enter this code and here we see that I need to install the create next app. And there we go. So what is the project name? So here I can put next.js 13 course. There we go, I'm going to type enter. And here it's asking me if I wanna use TypeScript. So it's up to you. Me, I'm going to use TypeScript probably all along, uh, um, all along those courses. So I'm going to type on yes. Am I using ESLint? Yes, I will use ESLint because I want to correct all my code. So I'm going to type yes. If I want to use Tailwind, so this is brand new. This is something that I like a lot. Is that me as a front-end developer, I'm using Tailwind a lot. So basically right now I get the option immediately when I set up my application to say, hey, I'm going to use Tailwind or no. So let's say that I'm going to say yes. And after that, it's asking me if I want to use the source directory, because basically you could have also your files out at the root of your project or inside a source directory. For some reasons, you would like to have a source directory. Me, I'm going to say yes. And there we go. Suddenly, I got another question, which is, would you like to use the app router? And the app router, remember, if we come back here, we see here, this is the option for next 13, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to say, yes, I wanna use the app router, and I want to customize the default import alias. I don't want to do it, sorry, for now. Probably I will come back on that later. So I'm going to click on no, and we've got something that is installing, not something, actually, the CLI that is installing Next.js right away. And we see that um, Next.js to run is React, React DOM, Next, of course, TypeScript, because I mentioned TypeScript, it got the type and Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and ESLint. So we're gonna wait that it's installed, and there we go, I got Next.js installed. Now I'm going to open my folder. Once your project is created, you can enter into your folder, and let's have a quick look at the architecture of a Next.js project. So we basically have the node modules, so the node modules, you are not going to touch them. It's, they are here actually to uh, make Next.js running. Then you got a public folder, and in here we see that we got two SVG. We got the next SVG, so we already understand that this SVG is basically the logo that we're gonna use probably into our application or not. And we've got the Vercel logo, so Vercel is the company that is making Next.js. All right, then we got the source folder, and inside we got the whole application, right? Source, under this we got an app folder. Okay, then we got the ESLint RC JSON with all the configuration of ESLint. We've got our Gitignore, 
We've got the types, the nextenv.d.ts, which are for the types of uh, TypeScript. And we've got this file called next.config.js. So basically, in here, we are able to configure how Next.js is going to behave inside the application. Then we got the package lock, uh, the JSON, the package.json with all the scripts, the dependency, the postcss.config.ts because I installed Next.js with that, the readme, and we've got also the tailwind.config.js. So for those who don't know Tailwind, I got a whole course on my channel where you can go to look at how we can use Tailwind to uh, give style to our application. And finally, the TS. Uh, uh, config.json. So the first thing we're going to do, we are going to type npm run dev and npm run dev, it's supposed to be uh, the command to run your project locally. So I'm going to type enter and then we see that it's going to run our application locally. So as we see right now, we see that we've got our server running and our server is um, um, displaying actually Next.js. So here, up here, we see that we got a new folder called .next. And inside we see here that we got probably, and for sure, this is the build of our application. And when I go on localhost 3000, what I got is basically the application. And we see that it's written, get started by editing source app.page.tx. Uh, okay. So right now our application is running. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually stop my server and I'm going to delete this dot next uh, uh, folder. And what I want to show you at first is to type npm run build. Okay. I want to see what is the, um, actually the production build. And of course, this is exactly the same as the one that has been created before to run the project. So every time we type next dev, it's going to build our project and to display it. And we see that during the build, there's uh, some kind of steps that are passed, right? It's first creating an optimized production build, compiled successfully. It's going to link and checking validity of types because we are on TypeScript. And it's collecting the page data. So we're going to see later what's really happening in here with collecting the page data, but we already understand that it's building something static and we can see it here, generating static page four on four. Finalizing page optimization. And we see here that we got the name of the chunks that have been created. So we got a root app and a root pages. And it's weird because we don't necessarily understand why we'd have app and pages. We're gonna see that later. So we see here all the details. We haven't seen the size of the files. And what we're going to do, we're going to click here on .next. And suddenly we see that the folder has more file than previously. We've got a cache folder. So if we look at it a little bit, we've got some weird files for us. If you don't know anything at first, we got some also uh, uh, GZ files. We got a server production, etc., etc. We got pages and we see that we have this app.js file. There is a static one. So in the static, it's exactly the same. We got the layout and stuff. We see that it's unreadable for us, okay? It's just a um, big folder containing a lot of file statics. And we got the CSS also that is compiled. And we've got the type that are here, the layout and the page. So we see that Next.js has built all these files to get the latest, the, 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 the last actually version of our application. So we are going to come back to this build folder later in the course to explain everything about what it does when we build an XGS application and how to debug troubleshoot when we got problem in production. Okay, so now we need to run again our application. So here I'm going to type yarn dev and my application will run again. And I'm not going to change anything for now. I'm going to change it later. If you want to take a look at it, you can probably look at all the code that has been generated when I created the app. And basically, if you did some uh, uh, Tailwind by, by the past, you would recognize the classes and you would recognize also that we are on HTML inside a TSX file because TSX it's actually TypeScript GSX basically. So we've got all of this in here. I'm not going to touch it. We've got our application running. We are ready to follow the entire course. But before I want to give you some tips and some accounts to follow to keep in touch with the latest features and the latest versions and also the best practice 
of Next.js. If you got Twitter and if you want to follow the latest developer news and the latest versions of Next.js, the improvement, the best practice, etc., I highly recommend you to follow Lee Robinson. So Lee Robinson is the VP of developer experience at Vercel. I already had a chat with him. He's a very, very nice guy. He's giving a lot of news uh, uh, about Next.js and he's also, of course, working on the development of Next.js at Vercel. So if you follow his Twitter, you will find a lot of um, a lot of good tips, a lot of good news about Next.js. And he's also got a twitch.tv where you can look at where he's uh, often developing uh, on Next.js. In the same team as Lee Robinson, there is Hassan LM Gary is a senior developer advocate at Vercel. He created some very nice stuff with AI and Next.js. In the same team, we've got also Stephen T. And Stephen T, or, or Tay, sorry if I misspell your name, Stephen. But uh, here, it, it's also a developer that is working on Next.js. He's got very, very good insight about Next.js. And he's also using Next.js to create products. He created a product called dub.sh. Very nice one, a very nice account to follow also. Of course, Vercel has its own YouTube channel, and I really recommend you to go and subscribe. You will find Lee on, uh, on the channel that is making videos, but also other personalities, very nice personalities that are uh, explaining to you every day what they try to um, put into the new version of Next.js to improve the developer experience. And you will also see that there is the CEO, Guillermo Roch, or uh, Roche, I don't know, uh, that is present, that is making videos. So I highly recommend you to go and subscribe to this channel. The last tip I wanted to give you is to follow a newsletter, and this is probably the best newsletter I've found this year. It's called Next.js Weekly. Next.js Weekly, it's a newsletter that has been created by Erfan. Erfan is also on Twitter. You can go and follow him. He's writing a, a newsletter about Next.js every week and he's giving tips about uh, all the latest news about Next.js. So as you see, I'm on my uh, Gmail account and I've been following this newsletter since April. I think the number one was before April. I don't know, but we are on August right now and there's already 18 version, uh, 18 uh, newsletter written, sorry. So if you click on this, you can look. There's a lot of very interesting news about Next.js, the community. You got package tools and repositories. You got also jobs. Um, well, this is the best for me, the best newsletter about Next.js and it's made by Erfan. All right, our application is ready. Uh, we have everything set up. Let's continue to learn how to develop a front-end application with Next.js 13.